these different practices. This is how we compose our understanding of ourselves, our identity, our community. And, um, and by and large, I have enjoyed using all of I actually don't like this book. <laughs> It's been, we've gotten all the way to December before I, I trashed the curriculum. So, I mean, I think that's, that's a good thing. I mean, given that I was a university professor, I waited this long to, to critique the book. I think you can buy this book. It's wonderful. It has lovely reflections on hospitality. Um, it's a very interesting meditation on that. I think it's really important when we talk about blessing is to actually begin in the scriptures <laughs> because... I actually think that blessing is one of those things that we don't understand very well. We, we, we have that meme, you know, hashtag blessed, which means basically prosperous or lucky or fortunate. Um, but what does it mean to be blessed? And so I wanted, I, I picked this out of a, 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 some, a person who wrote on this um, in a polemical piece, but I really like it. Um, the, the author's name is Ephraim Radner. And he says, blessing is life created by God, a life that gives life and extends life. And the extent to which a creature is a blessing, it is an instrument, as an instrument of God's creative and life-giving work. So blessing is connected fundamentally to life. And if we we're going to jump into um, the Old Testament, we would see um, a couple of uh, uh, ways of looking at what does it mean to bless and what does it mean to be a blessing and the word bless in Hebrew which is Barak which is from the name of our last president Barack Obama Barak means to is the verb to bless Barakah is a noun which means to be a blessing and it's associated with adoration and even uh, kind of in an etymological way with breaking down kind of breaking down or kneeling before the recipient and so What's, what's important in that is to see that blessing in the scriptures itself has a kind of um, ineffability to it. We don't quite know exactly what it means. What does it mean to break down? What does it mean to kneel before the person you're adoring, to, to bless them in that way? And more fundamentally, what does it mean for God to kneel before us? So the Hebrew Bible and in the Hebrew and the Old Testament has this incredibly powerful understanding of blessing, that God would actually kneel before us, that God would actually adore us. And, and then um, implicit in, in blessing is that a, 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 a hierarchy is thereby inverted. So in the book of Hebrews, it says, it is beyond dispute, which when anybody ever says that rhetorically, you mean that it, anybody can question that. If it says it's beyond dispute, it means I don't have time to argue this. But, but you should probably know better. And if you can't follow that, then, then, then really we, you should just stop reading this letter now. Um, it is beyond dispute that the inferior is blessed by this. What does that mean? It's a reference to a kind of inversion of hierarchy. Now, keep in mind, and I'm going to just jump back and forth a little bit. There is this line from the right one Eucharist um, that we don't do, which is the Eucharistic prayer one. So those of you who have been at the eight o'clock didn't see it, but there is a term that is used, which is uh, uh, really f uh, fabulous for understanding blessing. And that term is vouchsafe, to condescend, is what it means to vouchsafe. So that's the origin of blessing in its first understanding in the, uh, in the Hebrew Bible in the Old Testament. So um, it's often associated not only with God's presence, um, um, it, oh, it's most often associated with, um, um, uh, I actually screwed up the line there, by God's presence and by God's creative life-giving action, but also it's, it's known as well as working with people. Go ahead, Pastor. So, uh, so what you're saying, oh, can you go back to yeah, the... Yeah, sure, I can. Sorry, um, the Hebrews text where, where we're actually saying that the hierarchy is inverted, is that why we always say, bless the Lord? See, that is what I'm going to finish with. It's good that you could just jump right ahead. But that's fine. No, it's really, really fabulous because that's Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Because 
because what's happening, what's interesting about the whole concept of blessing, and this is why this book um, is a magnificent failure, but I think a beautiful <laughs> failure, is because blessing is a little ephemeral. It's a little bit, it's a, I mean, it's a, it, it depends on the context in which it happens and it has this kind of reference. And so what I wanna do in this presentation is step back to actually think about the original blessing that God gives us. And then maybe to then work our way back to what does it mean to bless God in return. So um, oftentimes if we look at these examples, you'll see uh, the concept of barak, of, of blessing, of a kind of gifting of God's self, of, of also of, of, of um, plenty and prosperity, and then finally of land. Um, so Genesis 128, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Now that is a key moment of this kind of blessing as multiplicity, as a kind of creation of more. And then um, there's a kind of blessing of space. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because in it, on it, God rested from all the work God had done in creation. In both of these, the Hebrew uh, word barak is used, right? Or, and then there's the blessing on Abraham. So I'll make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. So there's this, there's this uh, implicit in blessing. So some theologians have argued is this kind of um, blessing of fecundity, of fertility, of multiplication, of always making more of something, right? And um, one of the more interesting pieces of scripture, it happens in a kind of uh, moment that I think is really key because it, it, it pivots around the name. And this is where you can see blessing and, and productivity or creativity. Um, at the end of, um, towards the end of Genesis, when uh, Joseph has gone and has run away from Potiphar's wife and has told people dreams, and interpreted dreams in which he has reconciled with his brothers who had sold him into slavery there is this moment where Jacob, who is also called Israel, comes to Egypt to escape the famine in Israel. And there is this meeting where he is going to bless the older and younger son of Joseph. And so there is this moment here. Jacob is blessing um, uh, uh, both Ephraim and Manasseh. So he blessed them that day, saying, By Israel you will invoke blessings, saying, God make you like Ephraim and like Manasseh. So he put Ephraim ahead of Manasseh. Um, then Israel said to Joseph, I am about to die, but God will be with you and bring you again to the land of your ancestors. I now give you one portion more than to your brothers, the portion that I took from the hand of the Amorites with my sword and with my bow. So God is giving, I mean, uh, uh, Jacob, who is Israel, gives uh, Joseph some more land than he is traditionally um, meant to, to uh, possess. Right before that, there's this moment where Manasseh, who is the eldest, um, who should receive the first blessing, and Ephraim, who is the young, youngest, um, is going to receive the second blessing. So traditionally, Manasseh would have uh, Jacob's right hand placed upon him, and Ephraim would have his, uh, Jacob's left hand placed upon him. And so Jacob came into this right, and he goes like this. And there's this huge um, uh, confrontation between Joseph and Jacob saying, you're inverting the birth order. It's Manasseh who should be blessed first. Well, everything pivots on these two names. Because Manasseh means forgetfulness which um, early on, Joseph says, for God has caused me to forget my anger. And Ephraim means fruitfulness. So God has allowed me to prosper in this land. So when Jacob blesses Ephraim ahead of Manasseh, there's implicit in this theology of blessing a kind of privileging of fruitfulness, a privileging 
of prosperity, of privileging of grace, over forgetfulness. And I think that that's a key thing to see because it helps us understand when we get to the New Testament and realize that the words for blessing in New Testament are comparatively thin. Um, in the New Testament, um, you have basically two words are translated as bless and blessing. Uh, eulogia, which means good speech, and makarios, or bliss or happiness. And these are, um, these are, are not quite the same kind of deep resonance that Barak has, right? It doesn't convey the breaking down. It doesn't convey the, the fruitfulness. It doesn't convey the adoration. And so what some have argued is that we really don't understand what's going on in the New Testament unless we have complete reference to what's going on in the Old Testament. So what you'll see then in the New Testament is in Matthew 5.3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Makariai, a bad translation, a bad pronunciation. Luke 141, blessed are you among women. Yolojimene, uh, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And then Romans 12, 14, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Same repetition of Yolojete. So, there is in the New Testament a kind of use of blessing that has some kinds of changes. Do you see what I'm trying to get at here as we're unpacking all of this? Or is it just way too early in the morning to be going this deep? So, so what's happening is, so you are happy, you speak well, but all of those have to be seen within the context of this larger ferment of understanding of what a blessing is. So I want to argue that we're not dealing with different blessings totally, but we're dealing with a kind of fold in blessings, which is that the New Testament blessings presuppose the Old Testament, to Old Testament blessings of life, fruitfulness, and even land. However, all of these are now read through the blessing of Jesus, who is God's instrument. Blessing comes to us as a person. And this shifts the emphasis from an earthly to a heavenly blessing. Which is why I think the author of this text struggled so much. Because when you read the New Testament closely, there is a definite shift from earthly blessings to blessings as they are mediated through Jesus Christ. And those blessings are different um, uh, than the earthly blessings promised in the Old Testament. Those blessings... Uh, are about the heavenly city, the new Jerusalem, of which, or the kingdom of God, which is both in our midst but is coming. Um, or the blessing of being able to experience persecution because it brings you closer to Christ. So if you look at, for example, um, the mixed blessings in the New Testament. Blessed Marakoi, blissed, you are so blissful when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account, rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is what concludes the first part of the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in spirit. And then consider 1 Peter 4.14. 4, if you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed. Because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. So what do we see here? We see all of the blessings in the New Testament go through the lens of Christ. And all of those blessings are actually not about prosperity. And then in Romans 4, 7 to 8, Blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one against whom the Lord will not reckon sin. So there, there's a new fold in the kind of theology of blessing. It's moving towards the work of Jesus, not just the person of Jesus, the work of reconciliation. To do that is to be blessed. So, questions. What does it mean to be blessed? When did you last feel God's blessing? 
can we bless God? And this gets back to Manisha's point because one of the amazing things from Psalm 103 is bless the Lord. O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems you from the life of the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, is this division that I'm making between the Old Testament. The closer you scratch it, the more they come together, right? It's important for us to see some of the differences in between. What do others think? If any of these questions, please. Eric Taylor, we have to put this close to my mouth to be heard. It's good. When I think about blessing, I think it involves touching. Yeah. And the, the vision of Christ touching people to heal them. When Danaher's in my hospital room, he's touching me to heal me, right? Um, I know that uh, babies need to be held. I know that wives need to be hugged. So I think touching involves not just the physical touching, but touching the heart as well. So I think if you, it helps me to use the word touching when I talk about blessing. That is incredibly insightful. I love that. I think it's a brilliant insight because um, the terms blessing um, and, and to bless someone to speak well of them, right? The blessing of bliss and the blessing of speaking well. In the New Testament, there's all sorts of other things that happens when we read the New Testament. For example, the feeding of 5,000, when Jesus takes the bread and blesses it and gives it to them, that whole multiplication of the loaves and the physicality of that is meant to kind of recreate the kind of fecundity, right? and the kind of multiplicity of the original blessing of God, right? And so there's, there's all sorts of things. And then when Jesus is walking to go raise a, a young child, and this is in Mark chapter 5, and a woman reaches out and touches his cloak, and he, he recognizes that power leaves him, you know, is the term that's used. That's a kind of blessing that happens almost inadvertently. What do others think about that or... Others, please, you know, like, and you made it those candy pecans. I can't, st I can't help myself, you know. And I'm not being set free by the fact that I'm being weighed down by, you know, January 1st. So, I mean, that's, I mean, I think this is really helpful. What do others think? Thing. Yeah, right, please. Not over, overcome anything. Um, so, so John O'Donohue wrote that a book to bless the sacred spaces or something like that. Um, Space between. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and and I found that incredibly helpful because I, I I honestly didn't like understand what does it mean to bless someone. So so just helpful hermeneutics on how to do this. Um, he said that when you bless someone, it's always future tense. So it's always something nice. that, that is meant to happen um, ahead of you. And so given that, the best way to actually verbalize a blessing is to say, may, may you find the joy that you're looking for, hmm. right? May, may you enter into um, a space that will allow you to be who you're called to be, so on and so forth. Um, and I, and I find that really helpful to sort of think about um, how, how do I really take seriously that I have been called to bless simply because I'm a follower of Christ who blesses. Um, and, then, and then, you know, how do I live into that? And it's, it's pretty cool when you practice it because um, you find that you have to sort of focus on the person, try to discern what, what, what would be good for their future, and, and try to verbalize it, but it's, it, you know, it sometimes still gives you wiggle room so that, that um, you're not 
holding them to something, but that you're freeing them to be themselves. Is that, is that any of that makes I sense? love that. I love that. What do, what do others think about that? Um, I think of Emmanuel, God is with us. Yes. And I'm connection. I feel connected. And yeah. then when we pass that along, we connect with others. We're connecting through Jesus. Emmanuel, God is with us. And so I love it's that. like a state when you're talking about, I never really thought about it, but when you're talking about this, the space and the blessings, it's sort of like a state of being connected and, and knowing that, uh, that through God's our faith present. that God is with us. I like that. Emmanuel. And, and that was my first, my, before I went into all this biblical stuff, and I, I did it because I wanted, I just, I just, I blessing God gives us is God's presence, right? Because, again, that's to look at things through the lens of Jesus, right? Um, and then one, I didn't have time to really do this for today just because, you know, it's Advent, but um, one of my favorite weird indie movies is called Providence. It came out in the 80s. And it's this about these underworld kids. And one of them is running away from home and his father, he's running away from the law. And his father who's sick takes, he's a, he's a carpenter, he takes all of his, his tools and puts them in a bag and gives them to his child as he's fleeing the law. And he says, remember you're a good carpenter. And then he leaves. And I've always thought it's a, it's a poignant moment because uh, the kid is up to no good. <laughs> and the father is trying somehow to give him something that will, will enable him to, to be fruitful and to be free in the future. What are the thought about the breakdowns of varieties of blessing before. And yet, obviously, I had to come to terms with the word somehow. And I think for me, it is always carried a, a sense of laying a situation or a person open to the goodness and the activity of God. Now, God is already being good. God is already present in that person's life, whether she or he knows it. So what do I add by blessing? Well, it would appear next to nothing, but maybe my blessing is a little bit like the child's finger painting, which looks like nothing to somebody who isn't in the family, but the parent puts the finger painting on the refrigerator and celebrates it. My blessing, which is so minuscule, inviting God into a situation, allow, it's not that God needs it, but God allows me to cooperate with what God is doing for that person. That is so beautifully said and so right. And I think part of the problem why we struggle as a denomination to understand these things is um, we don't have a strong uh, theory. Right? So um, one of the great things that a, a, a theology of glory tells us is that, that God has created the world so that the world might celebrate with God and, and glorify God and give thanks to God. And it's not because God is insecure. God's not like Barbara Streisand. Um, it's that, it's that, it's that God, God delights in our delight. And so God gives us the, the, the power to bless. Um, not because, and, and that doesn't mean that God has lost any of God's own power when God gives us the power to bless, because it's a category of glory. Just as when God gives us glory, it's not like glory is not a scarce commodity, right? And that's the New Testament, right? Because the the disciples go to Jesus and says, "Grant us that I will sit on, you know, grant my 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 sons the privilege of sitting on your right and your left." Says says the, the mother of two disciples, right? So glory is not a scarce commodity, right? And, and uh, some have argued, and this is kind of maybe mean, but I think it's actually true in a sense, that a lot of the anger that the Pharisees had towards Jesus, it was the rage of the empty, right? So glory actually is um, something that kind of increases in us the more we participate in it. And I think the same can be said about blessing that when we are blessing, we actually become aware of what God's blessings are in our lives. 
which is why I did, I did kind of, this is my, my, my little uncomfortable question. I know I, I always go way too deep, and I apologize. I don't give you any, any space to wiggle, because maybe this is a thing to think about. Like, when was the last time you felt God's blessing? Who blessed you? Who blessed you recently? Thank, that's, I like, see, that's great. When I, when I was sitting at the table with my family. Yes. And I'm blessed to have children and grandchildren. Yes. And, and, and what's lovely about that is even though the New Testament does do this kind of shift towards Jesus, it doesn't mean that all of those Old Testament blessings don't have re, some kind of, a, a lot of veracity. Right? To, to have the blessing of a family is a blessing. Not everybody has that blessing. Right? And that's the, and that's the, the and, you, and then you, the older you get, I don't know, this is what I've noticed because I'm getting old, is like the more you realize how little you've done to deserve the blessings you've gotten. Right? You know, everybody works hard. Right? But not everybody has a magnificent church to lead. Um, everybody works hard and tries to be a good parent, but not everybody has their kids show up on the holidays. Just, I mean, I, I, I wish it was otherwise. I wish it would be, maybe I don't. I mean, my God, can you imagine if we all lived in a strict meritocracy? We'd, we'd all be alone <laughs> eating on Thanksgiving. But, but, but families are places of reconciliation and places of love and places of hanging in there and they're just places of blessings. Yeah, beautiful. Would you say Job was blessed? At the end. At the end, but... I said, would you say at the beginning? He didn't think so. Um, you know, I, well, he thought at the beginning, yes, it's the middle part of Job that's hard. After chapter 38, he definitely was blessed because God broke down and answered him out of the whirlwind, even though God was a little bit defensive um, at that moment, right? Um, God does break down and meet Job, right? And, and, uh, uh, that's that's an incredible moment. But that, that, there's a disturbing yes. theological question here, which is, of course, does God withhold blessings? Yes. Well, that's the thing. I, I did move quickly through this part, but if you go back to Genesis, there's always curses that are put alongside, right? And uh, and and that's the that's the and that's why I think the New Testament is so interesting. I also think that you know, using the Psalms as the pivot point might be the way to bring them all together. Um, because, you know, uh, Jesus prayed the Psalms and also the Psalms kind of have a, um, at least historically, at least a kind of Christological reading. But, but yeah, no, there's, there's there, the curses and the, and the blessings are, are often side by side in the scriptures. You know, think, think about going back all the way to here. Um, um, I, I look, I now give you the one portion more than your brothers, the portion that I took from the hand of the Amorites with my sword and with my bow. Well, the Amorites were not blessed that day. They could not write on their Instagram, hashtag blessed. They could not. <laughs> does, does, uh, Father, um, yeah, does, the, does the term for curse change depending on whether we're in the Old Testament or you the know, New Testament? I, 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 didn't, I didn't prepare for that class, but the, um, I do Sorry. think it's, uh, no, I think it's good. I, you know, it's very funny. Because Jesus talks plenty I, about does. I know, I being know. cursed, I mean, right? Well, woe the, to you. I mean, yeah, I, right. I think actually it's gonna, that, that could be a whole other class, but I do, I agree. I mean, that's exactly, that's yeah. a really good question. That's a really good question. We tend to sort it. One, one way that I, is um, you know the, these I, I find these these kinds of uh, terms um, defy singular definitions, mm -hmm. and so when I think of blessing, I, I inc include in my in my constellation of understandings um, relationship um, with God, and so if being blessed is a movement toward relationship or toward deeper relationship, being cursed is the absence of that relationship or the diminishing of that re relationship or the um, blindness to it. Yeah, I, I actually think that that's, that's, a, that's a beautiful way of looking at it because I, think, I do think that we go into things by fold by fold and we begin to understand bit by bit a complex thing like blessing, 
right? And so that's part of, it's a, there's definitely, and that's to go back, who's, someone said something about the relationship. You said something about the relationship being key, Emmanuel being God with us, and, and that's what I think of all of these things. And, and maybe that's the way you reconcile curses, which is that they are, they are part, you know, and that's, I mean, typically that's how theologians like Luther did. You know, that's just God's left hand, right? Um, God is chastising you so that you would be in better relationship with God. And so there's a kind of um, understanding that the love of, of God is infinite still and in, in particular for each of us. We are almost done, but please, who wants to say? Blessing and thanksgiving usually go together, but I th I'd like even to say before blessing a challenge because sometimes a challenge it hides a blessing because it allows you uh, to acquire a, a life habit let us say, for which you are thankful. And I don't know if it means that you bless God when you say thank you, but to me, a blessing and a thanks and a thanks, and maybe uh, challenge the beginning, all go together like in a circle. I completely agree, and that's, that's, a, that's kind of where I was aiming by placing this last. Because one of the ways that we can maybe start to identify the, the feeling of God's blessings in our lives is by actually beginning the chain by blessing God. Not because God isn't blessing us all the time, always, but until we begin to actually do that kind of movement of adoration or worship, then we don't actually see God's blessings in the world around us. So that's, I mean, that's a really key insight. We're out on this, unfortunately. Was that good? Was that, I mean, my goodness, is all right? We have fun? You know what I mean? I wasn't asking for that, but the... Like, like, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>